Alright lads, how are we all going today? Welcome back to another video. This one's a little unplanned, but I was having a look at the leak list that was put up recently by data miners, and there are some really cool things which we should talk about. So I had planned to get a dogfight video out today, I know it's been a while since we looked at that series and there are a lot of you asking after where those videos have gone. They're coming back real soon, hold tight. Unfortunately, at the time of recording this, the servers just went down for maintenance, so I can't actually record that one today. And I also have a more personal video which I can't make right now, I'll explain why when I eventually do get around to making it. But I do owe you guys a video, and luckily enough, War Thunder has some very dedicated data miners, which found a whole bunch of new vehicles in the CDK on a version of the dev server. Some of these are really interesting to talk about, new MBTs, new jets, battleships, potential new weapon systems, and some of them are just a wee bit weird. So what we're going to do today is kind of go through the list and have a quick discussion about some of these vehicles. Now I'm not going to cover all of them or this video would end up being probably four hours long. So if it's a variant or something with a new engine, I'm going to try and stick away from those just for time's sake. But there are some cool variants we might touch on briefly as far as new weapons, missiles, etc. Uh, primarily, we're going to be talking about new vehicles and what they might mean for the game as a whole. And then at the end of this video, we're going to have a look at some of those just weird findings and what my thoughts are on them. So I really hope you enjoy this video, get pumped for some cool new stuff. And just before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to my Pledsto. If you lads know, I don't use Patreon for this channel anymore, but Pledsto is much quicker and easier for you guys to use if you want to support my channel. You can support for as little as 10 cents a month for as little or as long as you want. And unlike with Patreon, everything goes to the creator to help me make more and better videos in the future. So a huge thank you to all of you, and let's get into this. So first up, let's talk tanks, starting out with the Germans, as the Americans don't really have anything new that's that interesting. And the first one I want to talk about is the Leopard 2 AV prototype with the PT-14 turret. There's actually a whole bunch of new information released just I think last year regarding the Leopard 2 AV and its armour, which it looks as though Gaijin have taken advantage of to model this tank. The Leopard 2 AV was sent to the US to compete alongside the XM1 and kind of evaluate both tanks against each other in 1976. Initially it was fitted with the Leopard 1's 105mm gun, but this prototype houses the 120mm L44. Now the Leopard 2 AV was considered to have lost the competition with the XM1, but this has long been debated as it's said that the trials were very heavily biased in favour of the American tank to kind of artificially bolster its support and get it to sell. The Leopard 2 PT-14 as it's known in the files would basically be a Leopard 2K, it should be the exact same hull, and while it misses out on the top mounted 20mm, it should have some good composite armour. There's also the Puma IFV, which is basically the successor to the Marder, it's light, it's fast, it's very modern, very advanced vehicle technologically, and it is armed to the teeth. We've had this one leaked several times in the past, so it looks as though it'll be coming very soon, and lads, be scared of this thing. It's got a 30mm cannon which should have the same fire rate as the Bradley's 25mm, has APFSDS so should have over 100 to maybe 120mm penetration, latest generation thermal optics and composite armour which should help it survive AA rounds from Tunguska's and other similar platforms. Guys the main new weapon system of this is the Spike LR missile which is a very modern very dangerous ATGM, tandem charge, should be immune to the T90's active protection system and it is capable of being fired in a fire and forget mode or with with a TV guidance system very similar to what we saw from this year's April Fools event. This would mean it could be used to scout around the area briefly as well, and although the Puma only carries two of them I believe, given the range of 5 kilometers and the camera guidance system, it could launch missiles infinitely from within a cap and pretty well guarantee getting them on target. So an extremely dangerous weapon system, this will probably be our highest tier IFV, unless Gadget choose not to model that functionality. We've also got a couple of new variants of the SDKFC 251 half track with 75 millimeters, a couple new Marder variants and that's about it. Moving on to the British, we have a South African SAM system on the Roycat chassis as well as the Vickers MBT Mark III, which is an upgrade of the Mark I we see at 7.7. Though it may look like this one would have some new armour, it's actually thinner than that of the Mark I, but sloped to offer roughly the same effectiveness overall. The Mark III does have a new 800 horsepower engine, giving it a high power to weight, as well as a laser rangefinder, so this thing will be very interesting. It should still be using the same ammo as the Mark 1, so I expect a BR of 8.0, possibly 8.3 given its mobility, which will be very nice for Britain to have in a main battle tank, as they don't really have anything like that until the much later Vickers Mark 7. 
Now Japan comes in with the most meme vehicle of the lot. Holy shit, I can't even look at this thing. But the Type 3 Kachi, oh my god. It was an amphibious tank similar to the Kami, armed with a 47mm gun. It looks like this one will actually be amphibious unlike the Kami, though both tanks were only amphibious when they had extra sections added to the front and back which were then disassembled after landing. Now, I'm not quite sure how big this thing is. It looks really, really big in the pictures, but I think this thing will be pretty similar to the American LVT. Japan also has the Type 10 main battle tank. Oh my God, am I excited for this vehicle. Designed to be lighter than the Type 90 in order to cross Japanese bridges and be more versatile, the Type 10 should feature roughly comparable armor, at least against APFSGS, better against heat and ATGMs, but coming in at only 40 to 44 tons, this thing is one of, if not the fastest main battle tanks in service today. It's got a new 120mm gun made domestically. This is not the German L44 gun, though it is very similar, and a new APFSDS round comparable to that of the Leclerc. So this thing should definitely be more up to par with the top tier MBTs than the Type 90s are. The Type 10 is probably the most sought after MBT in the game right now, as Japan has been suffering a top tier for a long time. Not just in performance, the Type 90s really shouldn't be an 11.0, but in the fact that they really haven't received anything new in a long time. So this is very good news. China has coming in a variant of the ZBL-08 IFV family, which are a series of eight wheeled vehicles developed domestically by Norinco, which is fantastic as one of the main problems people have with this tree is how much of it is copy pasted stuff from other nations. This variant, the ZTL-11, has a 105mm gun, very similar to the new premium one that was just added, but what I'm more excited for is that this could mean a whole bunch of ZBL-08 variants could come to the game very soon as well. You had variants with SAMs, with ATGMs and auto cannons like the BMPs, and even small surveillance drones, which we talked about in a previous video after they appeared in this year's April Fools as well. There's also a new variant of the Type 99 that was in the list. Now, this is not the Type 99A, which a couple of other content creators have stated incorrectly. Uh, that is a different vehicle with multiple upgrades, but the Type 99W or Type 992, as it should actually be designated, is a very minor upgrade over the base model we see in-game already. It's got the same armor, same engine, so not really the top tier tank China needs right now, which would be the Type 99A, but this at least gives you more in the lineup for now, similar to Japan having the Type 90B. Skipping over to France, we have a new Leclerc, the Serie 21, which is the modern version of the Leclerc used by the French army today. It had some minor changes to its armor, new optics, but basically this is another Leclerc, which if I'm being honest, I don't really see the point of. We've got a variant of the AMX-50 with a Batchats turret, but really the most interesting French tank is the AMX ELC Bis. If you've ever played World of Tanks, you probably hate this thing, they always kill me, I never spot them. But this is a very interesting prototype for an airdroppable tank. Now this is not the Even 90, which you might have heard, that's an entirely different prototype with a very different turret, but the ELC Bis was extremely small, smaller than the AMX-13, and so short the crew inside were so cramped, you couldn't actually traverse the turret while the tank was moving only a 30 degree turret traverse and only when stopped. This tank has a 90mm gun seen on the AML-90 and a power to weight ratio of over 35 horsepower per tonne, almost twice that of the M551 Sheridan. So a very speedy little vehicle and one I'm very excited to use. Sweden has a few interesting things like the PVKV-3 and PVKV-4, both with 57mm guns, as well as a new CV-90 or Stridsvorden 9040B, because, you know, if there's one thing the Swedish tech tree lacked, it's more CV-90s. Before we step up into aircraft, we have a bunch of battleships and battle cruisers coming in, such as the USS Alaska, which took part in the Battle of Okinawa in 1945. It's fast, 33 knots fast, with nine 12-inch guns. The German Geneiser now with 11-inch guns but better armor is coming in, and of course Tarpit, which has 15-inch guns, eight of them, and over 300 millimeters of armor. You've got the Japanese Fuso coming in, which took part in the Battle of Leyte Gulf, with 12 14-inch guns, so very heavy broadside, but a much slower speed of only 23 knots, as well as the best battleship ever built, HMS Hood, which sank in about three minutes. Damn. This thing in War Thunder should be very interesting, comparable to Tarpit in speed, armor, and firepower. Of course, naval is a fairly minor part of War Thunder, and for good reason. There's a lot that needs fixing with the game mode to really have it be taken seriously. 
but these battleships will hopefully inject some more enjoyment into the game and encourage more people to play it, which in turn makes it more worth focusing on for Gaijin. What's interesting about these battleships and battlecruisers is that they all carried spotter aircraft, which is something that's been recently added to naval forces is the ability to launch and control these spotter planes. So all around some cool new stuff for you naval fans, yeah, all two of you. That's a bad joke. We also have a bunch of new helicopters, starting out with the American AH-56 Cheyenne, which was a cancelled prototype for an armed helicopter that could escort Hueys, basically a beefier AH-1G with the same turret, including the option for a 40mm grenade launcher, FFARs and tow missiles. This was one fast helicopter with an interesting configuration having two tail rotors, and if I had to guess, I'd say this will end up either as a premium or as an event vehicle of some kind, as only 10 of them were built before the project was cancelled. There's also the tiny AH-6, which is the attack variant of the MH-6 Little Bird. Kind of reminds you of the beginner helicopters like the Alouette, right? Well, forget that. This thing carried Hellfires. <laughs> I can't even tell you how weird it seems to me that this little thing was equipped with Hellfire missiles as well as Stingers, so a fun little thing that should actually be quite effective, given that it'll probably end up as the lowest BR helicopter with such a weapon system. Now it's actually capable of quite a high speed, but it only carried four missiles. Really, I just can't wait to fly this thing. I mean, I'm the kind of guy who loves the KA-29. Next up is the Eurocopter EC-145, which is an interesting vehicle as it didn't carry any air-to-ground weaponry, it is a utility helicopter only, and even the military variant, which is different to this one, it only carried machine guns. So I'd suspect, as many people have suggested, that this could be something we'll see as an AI vehicle, possibly for helicopter EC. The Westland Wessex is a British variant of the American H-34 Choctaw, which we already see in the American and French trees, and what was also leaked is the Swedish variant of the Huey, which obviously means, yes, a Swedish helicopter tech tree. There are actually several models of helicopters that could fit for a Swedish heli tree, I just hope that we don't have a similar situation to Japan and Italy, where both Sweden and hopefully China end up with a single premium but no tech tree for a whole year. Now we move on to my favourite part, and that is the aircraft, where there are a whole buttload of new models, variants, and potential new mechanics and weapon systems. So I'm going to have to just pick my favourite ones here to talk about, or the ones I think you guys will want to hear about the most, or we will be here all day. By the way, there will be a link to the full list of leaked vehicles and some more images too, so go check them out if you want to look at some of the things I'm skipping over here, that'll be down below. So the SNCAO 200 is a French pre-war prototype monoplane fighter that was dropped when France was invaded by Germany. Like many French Orlantier aircraft, this plane had access to a single 20mm and two 7.5mm machine guns, and had a decent max speed of 550km per hour. I can see this plane being an event reward as only one was ever built, but it was actually sent up to defend the factory where it was made, and unconfirmed reports state that it may have even shot down a German bomber. That is incredibly cool. So a weird looking one-off with an interesting bit of history, sounds like the perfect event reward to me. Next up, the Saversky P-35, one of the early American mono-wing fighters. This is the predecessor to the P-43 and later the P-47 Thunderbolt, and it was the first US Army Air Corps fighter to feature retractable landing gear. I've actually suggested the addition of this exact plane before, so it's very nice to see on this list. Armed with two 30 cals and two 50 cals, and with a top speed of around 460 kilometers per hour, the P-35 will be a tier one aircraft in my opinion, and it was also used by Sweden as the J-9. The Avro Shackleton, a highly anticipated aircraft for War Thunder, was a post-war British maritime patrol aircraft developed from the Lincoln, which could carry up to 10,000 pounds of bombs and with a top speed of just under 500 kilometers per hour. Unfortunately, this isn't that fast for a post-war bomber, and it could be jumped on by some pretty mean fighters. So this aircraft was mainly used as an anti-submarine bomber using depth charges, and also saw modification to fill the role of an airborne early warning or AEW plane, being replaced late into the Cold War by the Hawker Siddeley Nimrod and the Boeing E3 Sentry in their respective roles. Now airborne warning aircraft are something I actually plan to talk about in an upcoming video as they could be great for AIs that fly around near the back of the respective team sides of the map and this could provide much needed improvements to the spotting system while also opening up tactics for interceptors to push up early game and attempt to get at the enemy team's AEW aircraft in order to secure the advantage for their team. 
Next on the list, the Spitfire Mark 7 and the Welkin. Now I've chosen to feature these two aircraft together as while they are very different, they were both super high altitude fighters designed as a way to combat the threat of the Junkers JU-86P, a high altitude Luftwaffe bomber. These aircraft both have incredibly long wings, which worries me that they may like to tear off very easily in high G maneuvers, but if these aircraft get an air spawn, they could be beast boom and zoom fighters given their high altitude performance. The Spit Mark 7 featured the standard armament of two 20mm and four 30 cals, while the Welkin housed four 20mm Hispanos and travelled at over 600km per hour, making it a great heavy fighter. Only a small number of Welkins were ever produced, as while it was a great aircraft when it first flew in 1942, problems with its Rolls-Royce Peregrine engines meant that it couldn't enter service until 44, by which point the Luftwaffe were no longer conducting high altitude bombing and reconnaissance missions. Moving up to jets, China will receive the Q5D or Q5 5M, which is a 1990s modernization done in collaboration with Italy, adding more hardpoints, new onboard systems such as a ballistic computer and radar, larger bombs up to a thousand kilograms, as well as potentially laser guided bombs and air to air missiles, giving it some defense capability. These will be the same air to air missiles currently seen on the new J7E, making this upgraded attacker a great match for the US A7 Corsair. Speaking of the A7, we'll be seeing a new variant, the A7E, which I assume will receive the AGM 65Bs as well as one of my favourite US attackers, the A4M Skyhawk. This plane is sexy, with a massive dorsal spine compared to the current A4s, which are very capable aircraft. Now, I'm honestly surprised that this is being called the A4M rather than A4E, as of course the squadron reward model currently seen in game was specifically named A4E early. When we look at the Q5 we just talked about, or the German Phantoms, the fact that there's a variant called early usually means that a later iteration of the same variant will come. So if this is the Marine Corps variant, the A4M, why not just call the Squadron one A4E? Honestly, I just think this looks mean with that big chunky spine, and this variant also houses a much more powerful engine, a new level bombing system, and the ability to carry Maverick air-to-ground missiles, or the AGM-45 Shrike anti-radiation missile, which I should mention the A7E could also carry. Now, Shrikes were not very capable compared to later arms. They had a relatively short range and poor accuracy and would self-destruct if the target switched off their radar. So an interesting new weapon system, but not something beyond the realms of possibility right now. The A4M was used right into the Gulf War, so it's also likely to get some upgraded air-to-air -air missiles like AIM-9Gs, making it a very enjoyable platform, which I cannot wait to use. Now, of course, we're not done with US strike aircraft, with... Do, do you guys hear that? Is that... Yes, it's the F-105 Thunder Chief, the long-awaited fighter bomber, really the major icon of the early Vietnam War. First entering service in 1958, the F-105 was a further development of the F-84s, being a fighter bomber that focused more on the bomber part than the fighter. Capable of Mark II, the F-105 could carry up to 16 750-pound bombs, as well as the standard Mark 80 series, ball pumps, and variants of this thing were also modified for the Air Force's Wild Weasel missions and carried strikes. Personally, however, I doubt that it'll get these in-game, as that was only the modified version that carried them and not the more signature variants of the aircraft, and this would allow the A4M and A7E to shine more with these weapons. This also allows the F-105, which, by the way, was one off if not the only aircraft in the leak list where the variant hasn't been specified, to come in the more conventional bomber focused variant as a hard counter to the Soviet Yak-28B, the only top tier bomber right now. It would definitely be a much higher BR than the Brewer, probably 10.3, but while I may not agree with it, it's clear Gaijin do want to do rank 6 bomber aircraft. Just like the Yak-28, which came in the bomber rather than the interceptor variant, the Thud could come in its mainline form rather than the specialised seed variant, the Wild Weasel 4. Either way, the F-105 is probably the most highly anticipated jet right now, with many players asking why it hasn't been added already. Now, it looks as though we'll be correcting that. Alongside these new strike aircraft, there will be two new variants of the Super Mysterio, both in Israeli colours, a new Swift, a Taiwanese F-5E, and I should point out that we've skipped over a ton of props, such as a whole string of the Hawk 75s, new boat plane bombers for a couple of nations like America and Russia, a Spanish bomber, which is quite interesting, and a couple of new Japanese heavy fighters. The main one, however, is of course the JA-37 Vigan. This is another aircraft that's been 
found in the game files several times already, and it makes sense to be coming very soon, as although there are upgrades to the Draken that could give Sweden an improved top tier jet, the Viggen is the next logical step up. A third generation jet fighter, the Viggen is Sweden's answer to the F4 Phantom, MiG-23 and the Mirage F1, which it was interesting not to see in this leak list. Produced from 1970, the Viggen wouldn't have the turning performance of the Draken, but instead would be more familiar to users of the Lansen, with its high speed and acceleration. It should outmaneuver the F4 or MiG-23, and could carry a single 30mm cannon in a gun pod. Now the missiles of this aircraft get very scary, being able to mount the standard RB-24J or AIM-9Js, but as well the RB-74 or AIM-9L, a fierce step up in missile capability. It also carry the semi-active radar homing Skyflash or RB-71, which could also be given to the Phantom FGR-2. So we have cause for the Viggen to be added right now, without necessarily requiring power creep from other nations to match it, but also plenty of room for it to grow with new missiles when we do start looking at more advanced aircraft and weapon systems in the future. F-16 by the end of this year guys, I'm calling it. Now all aspect missiles are something I've talked about in the past on several occasions, but I don't think I've ever actually gone into the sorts of tactics they'll bring. The fact is that when it comes to these missiles, you'll actually want to face them head on, as they're much easier to decoy with flares from the front than they would be if they can see your engine directly. This practically forces the two aircraft to merge, or in other words enter into a turning dogfight, and this is something a lot of players want from the game, but the same issue still exists of it being almost impossible to engage in a lasting dogfight in top tier jets right now without being vulnerable to another of the opponent's teammates. Now, there are some really simple potential fixes for this sort of thing which we have talked about in the past and will go over in another upcoming video. The last things we saw on the leak list were downright weird, with the first being several civilian aircraft and the latter being mech walkers, similar to what was seen in an old April Fools. When it comes to the Cessnas and Pipers, I would suggest that these may end up as map assets, similar to the airliners seen on the cargo port map, I believe they're DC-6s, correct me if I'm wrong, not playable aircraft, as they were only ever extremely lightly armed by some militias, and that's not really the sort of thing for War Thunder. I can more see Gaijin using them as static assets or for single player missions, these have been in the game forever and feature models that you can't see in regular gameplay like C-47s. Either way, not all that significant in my opinion. There's also the potential that Gaijin are using War Thunder's internal test server as a way of building a new IP, which will be more of a flight simulator, something the Dagor engine could work well with. Lastly is the mechs, and these are interesting because they're very different to what we saw seven years ago during April Fools. Those models were all the same, while these things look far more intriguing, with various different designs and tank types covered, recognisable to different nations. You've got bulky four-legged German mechs with King Tiger turrets, multiple Sherman, Pershing and Patton mechs for the US, a spider-like walker for Russia fitted with an IS-2 turret, and even a small French walker with an AMX-13 turret. Now obviously these types of vehicles are not going to make it into the game, even years down the track when Gaijin have run out of real stuff to add, this just isn't it War Thunder. But perhaps we'll see a revisit to the April Fools events of past years, as the M4 fake tank was also present in the list, the old inflatable shaman model powered by bicycles which fires armour piercing carrots and high explosive potatoes. Well that's just in short, we chased off all the new viewers, thank you Gaijin. Now it would be really interesting in my opinion to return to some of the old events within the new War Thunder engine and with new additions like the French designed mech. Whatever these leaks are however, they certainly don't appear to fit in with the rest, so if you have any ideas as to what they might be for, I'd love to hear them. Well lads, that is going to be it for this video, I hope you have enjoyed. It's always interesting to get new information like this, though I would say, as many in the community have reckoned on, that either some poor intern just said a very loud BIT, or that this may have been an intentional leak to kind of bring some early hype for some new stuff without actually confirming it, just to keep us hooked. War Thunder has some very avid data miners, and all Gaijin really had to do was give us some leaks like this and let the community run wild with it, and there they have continuously generated interest among the existing players rather than having us quit on them. Either way, that looks to have been the actual outcome, and I was definitely excited to see some of these vehicles as they include some of my favourites. As mentioned previously, there will be full lists down below for you to check out, and I would love to hear your thoughts on them all in the comments. There were also a whole bunch of new maps, mostly cityscapes, which could prove more interesting than the city and urban maps we've gotten so far, but honestly, I just want some more long range stuff like the Red Desert map, that is fantastic for high tier. 
Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed and I will catch you lads on the battlefield. Phoenix Hunter. Sleep well, my dude. That sounds weird. I, I can never not hear that as weird. It sounds weird to say to someone. Sleep well, buddy. Sleep well. Give you some uh, Scottish ASMR first. Right here, you little wankers. There you go. Right, sleep well, dude.